Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today, I am finally able to show you Intel's long-awaited ARC graphics cards. Feels like we've been talking about these upcoming Intel GPUs for years now, and maybe we have been. A little over a year ago now, Tim covered Intel's Architecture Day 2021, where Intel detailed their ARC Alchemist GPUs, along with XESS AI-based upscaling. This was incredibly exciting stuff at the time due to an industry-wide shortage of graphics cards thanks to mining. And back then, people were spending big money on old, outdated second-hand graphics cards, so a new product from Intel would have been very welcomed. Sadly though, Intel missed that incredible window of opportunity by about a year, as today marks the introduction of the ARC A750 and A770 graphics cards. Now there are two versions of the A770, the standard 8GB model and then a more premium 16GB model, which Intel calls the limited edition version, but it's n n in no way limited, so not sure about that. Anyway, the A770 limited edition, that we have on hand for testing comes in at an MSRP of $350, while the standard 8GB model costs $330. Then there's the slightly cut down A750, which costs $290. The A770 features 32 XE cores, 32 ray tracing units, an operating frequency of 2.1 GHz, and a 225 watt power rating. Now, the 16GB version enjoys a memory bandwidth of up to 560GB per second, while the cheaper 8GB version not only has half as much VRAM, but the bandwidth has also been cut down by 9%, opposed to 17.5GB per second GDDR6 memory on the 16GB model, as it uses 16GB per second GDDR6 memory, opposed to 17.5GB per second GDDR6. Then we have the A750, which when compared to the A770 has 13% fewer cores and ray tracing units at 28, 50 MHz shaved off the operating frequency, and then the same 8GB of VRAM as the 8GB version of the A770, with the same 512GB per second memory bandwidth, and a total board power rating of 225 watts. I should also note that all models feature a 256-bit wide memory bus, PCI Express 4.0x16 support, and require an 8-pin plus a 6-pin power input. So those are the key specifications, and for this review, I'll be using the Intel reference cards for both the A770 and A750, and I'll check out some stuff like cooling performance a little bit later on. Intel's Arc Alchemist GPUs also offer a number of hardware-accelerated media features, covering media transcode, hyperencode, hardware-accelerated AV1 encode, and AI acceleration delivered by Intel XMX. However, we don't normally cover productivity performance or encoding slash decoding benchmarks in our gaming focus reviews, and this review will be no exception. And apart from the fact that we don't normally cover this stuff, we're extremely pressed for time right now coming off the back of the Zen 4 testing with much more to do there, and of course next week we have the RTX 4090. I also won't be testing Intel's XESS technology, but this is a feature we do plan to cover in great detail soon. Similar to the situation we saw with DLSS, these upscaling technologies require a great deal of scrutiny, and Tim will do just that in a separate content piece soon, so make sure you subscribe for that. Now for testing. All GPUs have been tested at the official clock specification, so no factory overclocking here. The CPU used is the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D with 32GB of dual rank dual channel DDR4 3200CL14 memory on the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Extreme motherboard, and in total I've tested 12 games at 1080p and 1440p, so let's go over the data. First up we have Rainbow Six Extraction, this was the only game to have an issue in my testing. The game didn't crash, but the menus had a strange artifacting bug which Intel says they're aware of, and it will be fixed in a future driver update, so perhaps a non-issue moving forward. The game itself appeared to play well, and performance overall was excellent. At 1080p, the A750 was faster than both the 6650 and RTX 3060, while the A770 was 14% faster than the 6650 XT, so that's an impressive result and a good win for Intel. Quite incredibly, that margin blows out to 24% at 1440p as the A770 managed 117 FPS and the A750 108 FPS. In fact, the A770 wasn't that much slower than the 6700 XT, so very impressive stuff here indeed. The F1 2021 results were also very impressive. Here the A770 was 15% faster than the 6650 XT at 1080p, and just 10% slower than the 6700 XT. It also blew the RTX 3060 out of the water to come in just 9% slower than the 3060 Ti. 
And the A750 also did really well, just edging out the 6650 XT and RTX 3060. Jumping up to 1440p saw the A770 lead the 6650 XT by a massive 21% margin, pumping out 76 FPS to just 63 FPS for the Radeon GPU, and that's with ray tracing enabled. The A750 was also strong here, beating the RTX 3060 by a 9% margin, so another very solid result here for Intel. Unfortunately though, things do go a bit skew whiff for the Arc GPUs in Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p, the A770 came in behind even the RX 6600, making it 19% slower than the 6650 XT and 8% slower than the RTX 3060. So given what we've seen so far, that is a very disappointing result. Increasing the resolution to 1440p does help out a bit, and now the A770 can be seen basically matching the RTX 3060, but it's still 8% slower than the 6650 XT. Meanwhile, the A750 is only delivering 6600 light performance, so not a good title for ARC. It's a similar story in Watch Dogs Legion, though performance is very good compared to Nvidia, but less impressive compared to AMD. The A770, for example, was 13% faster than the RTX 3060, but a massive 16% slower than the 6650 XT. Basically, the A750 was only able to match the cheaper RX 6600, so that's a pretty brutal outcome for Intel. However, increasing the resolution to 1440p drastically changes the picture here, and now the A770 is actually able to match the 6650 XT with 76 FPS on average. The A750 also jumped up to the 6600 XT with 70 FPS, and both GPUs were much faster than the RTX 3060, so it would seem that these ARC GPUs do prefer the 1440p resolution, opposed to 1080p, at least from a competitive standpoint. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is an older DirectX 12 title, and it's not one that ARC is well optimised for, falling short of 100 FPS on average at 1080p. With just 92 FPS, the A770 was only able to match the RX 6600, making it 18% slower than the 6650 XT and 10% slower than the RTX 3060. Once again though, those margins do close up at 1440p and now the A770 was just 7% slower than the 6650 XT while the A750 was 8% faster than the RX 6600. Moving on, we see that Hitman 3 is a brutal title for the ARC GPUs at 1080p, as here both were quite a bit slower than the RTX 3060 and miles slower than the 6650 XT. Again though, 1440p does help improve the A770 and A750 standings, pushing both ahead of the RX 6600. Now, the A770 was 10% slower than the 6650 XT, so still quite a bad outcome given the price, but much better than the situation seen at 1080p. Far Cry 6 is really another poor title for the ARC GPUs, depending on what you compare them to. And you can see why Intel went with the RTX 3060, because here the A770 was just 3% slower. But, when compared to the 6650 XT, it was a whopping 25% slower and 12% slower than the much cheaper RX 6600. Upping the resolution to 1440p did get the A770 alongside the RX 6600, but still, it was 18% slower than the 6650 XT, so not a good result relative to the Radeon GPUs. Next, we have Cyberpunk 2077, and again, the 1080p results aren't pretty with the A770 coming in behind the RX 6600 to make it 20% slower than the 6650 XT. Oddly, both the A770 and A750 delivered virtually the same performance here, so it does appear to be some kind of bottleneck, either caused by the Alchemist architecture, or perhaps it's just a driver issue. It's an odd one though, because increasing the resolution to 1440p only reduced performance of the A770 by 15%. Meanwhile, the 6650 XT saw a more typical 42% drop, and the RTX 3060 a 40% drop. The good news being that at 1440p, both the A770 and A750 were faster than the 6650 XT, and in fact weren't much slower than the RTX 3060 Ti. So that's a tremendous result, and very surprising given what was seen at 1080p. The Dying Light 2 results are much more competitive at 1080p. The A770 edged out the 6650 XT to deliver 3060 Ti Lite performance, and the A750 also managed to match the 6650 XT and it crushed the RTX 3060. Then at 1440p, the Arc GPUs look very impressive, and the A770 isn't that far off the RTX 3070. 
All said and done, it was 16% faster than the 6650 XT, while the A750 was 7% faster, so certainly impressive stuff here. Moving on to Halo Infinite, the Arc GPUs can again be found delivering pretty sub-optimal performance at 1080p, as both were slow on the RX 6600 and just 16% faster than the RTX 3050, and while I know 16% is quite a sizable margin, when comparing any GPU with the RTX 3050, 16% is not really a sizable margin. Sadly, even at 1440p, the Arc GPUs are massively underwhelming in Halo Infinite, trailing not just the RTX 3060, but also the 6650 XT, and by quite some margin as well. Now, if you recall, when I first benchmarked Spider-Man Remastered with a boatload of GPUs, I did include the A380, and the results were pretty horrible. In fact, they were very horrible. Shortly after that video, Intel addressed the performance issues with a new driver, but I wasn't going to revisit that content just for the A380. Anyway, performance with the current driver is mighty impressive, as we see here with the A770 and A750, both of which crushed the RTX 3060 and 6650 XT at 1080p. The 1440p data was also very impressive. Here the A770 was just 7% slower than the 3060 Ti and almost 30% faster than the 6650 XT. So amazing performance here. I just wish we saw more of it. And here's the most disappointing result and one of the biggest issues with the Arc Alchemist architecture, support for older games. Counter-Strike Global Offensive might be super old, and it might only use DirectX 9, but it's by far and away the most played game on Steam, with peaks of a million players daily, so more than twice that of Apex Legends, for example. And that's a huge problem for Intel, because as you can see here, the performance is nowhere with the A770 and A750. And in case you're wondering, yeah, these results are accurate, and even at 1440p, it's still a complete mess. The game is technically very playable, but certainly not in a competitive setting, and you'd obviously just buy a GeForce or Radeon GPU if you played CSGO or other old games. And the power consumption is really not anything you get excited about either, but it's far from a disaster. You're looking at similar power usage to that of the much faster Radeon RX 6800 for the A770, as it bumped up consumption by 23% over the 6650 XT. The A750 was really no better, so in terms of power efficiency and performance per watt, Arc is kind of bad, but it's certainly not a deal breaker. Okay, time for cooling performance, and I'm just going to skim over this section. The Intel reference cards worked well, they certainly look simple, but nice enough, and the build quality is good, though they are a bit of a pain to take apart. Anyway, the A750 ran at a core temperature of 67 degrees with the memory at 70 degrees, so both are very acceptable, especially given the 1500 RPM fan speed which resulted in near silent operation. As you can see, the GPU clocked at 2.4 GHz and the memory ran at the advertised 16 gigabits per second. Then we have the A770 which ran its cores and memory at 70 degrees with a fan speed of 1600 RPM, so again, it was very quiet. Given the GPU is sucking down just 155 watts on average, it's really not that hard to cool, especially by today's standards. Now, looking at the 12 game average, it's pretty hard to get excited about these new Intel Arc graphics cards. The A770 only managed to match the RX 6600 with 102 FPS on average, while the A750 was a whisker slower with 97 FPS. The 1440p results are more compelling, but even so, the A770 falling behind the 6650 XT is a rough deal from Intel, and although it looks good sitting next to the RTX 3060, the GeForce GPU really was already a terrible deal next to the 6650 XT, so really AMD has made life difficult here for Intel. And there's really no better way to illustrate that point than to look at a simple cost per frame graph, and we'll start with the 1080p data. In terms of price to performance, the A750 is only able to match the 6600 XT, while the A770 does beat out the already bad value RTX 3060 and 3060 Ti, but can only match the RX 6800, which is 60% faster. Really, both should be compared to the 6650 XT, and when doing so, you learn that the A750 costs 15% more per frame, and the A770, well, it's 37% more costly per frame. Yeah. Anyway, 1440p, and here things look a lot better for Intel, but ultimately really still not good enough. The 6650 XT matched the cost per frame of the RX 6600, and that meant the A750 was 3% more costly per frame, and the A770 21% more costly. 
Even the 8 gigabyte version of the A770 will come out more expensive per frame than the A750, so in short, Intel can't match the 6650 XT at the current MSRPs. There's really not much more to say. The cost per frame graph really nailed it. Like nailed the A770 to the point where it really is quite sadly dead on arrival. That seems a bit harsh to say, as in quite a few of the instances, the performance was really quite impressive given the price. But sadly, there were a number of instances where it was anywhere from underwhelming to downright terrible. At the end of the day, you can't even begin to entertain the idea of paying a premium for the A770 or A750 over established Radeon GPUs. Look, if the RTX 3060 was as good as it got in the sub $400 US market, then the A770 or A750 might be worth a shot. But unfortunately for Intel, AMD has managed to undercut Nvidia by quite a substantial margin, making the GeForce GPUs largely irrelevant in the sub $400 market. And out of interest, we asked on Twitter how much cheaper these Arc GPUs would need to be in order for you to purchase one over an AMD or NVIDIA graphics card. The general consensus was that Intel needed to come in at least 20% cheaper. So with the 6650 XT easily available for $300 US, that means the A770 would have to cost no more than $240 US for the majority of you to go for it. And that's a discount of a little over 30%. So that's probably never going to happen as Intel would likely be selling them at a significant loss. Unfortunately for Intel though, that is the reality of the situation. The A770 needs to cost $240 and the A750 $220. Anything more than that, and you might as well buy from the established brands. And granted, we're yet to properly investigate stuff like XESS. But of course, Nvidia has DLSS and AMD offers FSR. So there's no chance Intel's upscaling technology makes the Arc GPUs a must have item. I also haven't really had a time to check out the ray tracing performance beyond what we saw in F1 2021. And that's certainly something to explore with future content. That said, I strongly believe for the most part, ray tracing at this performance tier is largely irrelevant as you have to compromise too heavily on other visual quality settings in order to achieve a 60 FPS minimum at low resolutions such as 1080p. And I have the same opinion of the 6650 XT and RTX 3060. Overall, the A770 and A750 genuinely impressed me on numerous occasions during my testing, and there's certainly real potential for Intel to become a genuine third competitor in the GPU space. It's just not going to happen with Alchemist, and realistically, that was never going to be possible. So unless Intel can and is willing to slash prices, I can't recommend you take the gamble on either the A770 or A750, you really are just better off buying the 6650 XT. That's simply all there is to it. So with that, I'm going to end the video here. If you liked it, you know what to do. Subscribe. Also, we have Float Plan and Patreon. If you'd like more hardware unbox goodness, you can get stuff like, well, access to our exclusive Discord server. Tim and myself do a live stream, which I guess is also exclusive. A lot of exclusive stuff over there. Uh, Q&As, behind the scenes content, a lot of cool stuff. So if you're interested, check it out. But if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.